So here, here we are. Hello and welcome back to the Daily Weekly Podcast. I'm your host Bradley and well, this is the first episode that I've done in over a year, I think, and obviously I'm doing it by myself at the moment, although I am in talks with some other people to try and have them on as little guests and co-hosts and things like that, but for the time being, it's just me. I want to get some quick apologies out there. I'm sat by a window, so if you hear any cars go by, apologies for that. The chair I'm sitting on is a bit squeaky. So if you hear that, again, I'm, I'm sorry. And another thing, the microphone, and I'm, I'm filming this on my iPad Pro, but with a microphone, as you can see. But if, uh, you know, it's on a table, so if I ever knock it, you're probably going to hear that on the mic and the camera's going to shake. I was going to use my my actual camera, but the settings are all set up for when I film at the desk, and I didn't, I didn't want to adjust and mess with that, so I need to get another camera, which I want to do anyway. I want to get the Sony ZV-1 because I think that seems quite good. I mean, I still use that one, obviously, but it's just handy to have another one. And especially for daily weekly builds and other things like that, like I want to start live streaming, but you can't really do it with a Canon M50. You can, but, you know, I want something a bit different, and apparently the ZV-1 is, is pretty good. But I don't know. I'm no expert. Um, oh, just another one for noise. The people behind in the house next door, which is just behind this wall, uh, I think they're, like, moving or something or rearranging their furniture. Which isn't ideal when you're trying to record a podcast, but again, apologies for anything like that. So, what what are we talking about today? To be honest, I well, I know what I want to say, but I haven't scripted this because I wanted it to come across a bit kind of real and natural and just to to see where it goes. I mean, you know, this podcast was originally about movie and TV news, and I'm sure we're going to look at some of that today. But also, it's pretty much my podcast, so. You know, I might talk about me or my life or the Daily Weekly as a whole because, you know, we have four channels. We've got the Daily Weekly Show, the Daily Weekly Podcast, Daily Weekly Extra and Daily Weekly Builds. You know, this is about all of them. It's called the Daily Weekly Podcast after all. So anything can happen. And of course, for old time's sake, I probably will round off this episode with a weird news story because they were always quite a treat. So here here we are. I, I put this off, you know, I wrote episodes to do by myself and I was doing episodes by myself last year, but they just weren't the same. And, you know, there was no dramatic YouTuber beef between me or any of the previous, you know, co-host life gets in the way and, you know, other things take priority. I, you know, I understand that. I don't have any bad blood against anybody. So I did try and do it by myself, but it just, I, I don't know, like they're a bit short so some, I think one of the episodes was only about 15 minutes long, and that's not really a podcast, is it? You know, I've got episodes of the show that are longer than that. <laughs> so, I mean, this one, I'm looking at the little timer, and apparently we're on three minutes and 20 seconds or so. So I, I don't really know how much longer this is going to go for. Hopefully at least half an hour. Like, that is a good minimum for me. I would be happy with it around half an hour, especially just by myself, because, you know, it's hard when you, you you can't really have a conversation by myself, but I don't want it to be like I'm talking at you, if that makes sense. You know, some people can do solo podcasts, and that's great. I I've tried, and it's okay. I'm just, it's just not something I'm I'm used to. I, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna look on my phone to see what was the last episode of the podcast that actually went out. Load up the old Daily Weekly Podcast YouTube channel, which has been a bit quiet. There we go. Oh, and we're on 53 subscribers at the time of recording. And for a little fun fact, I'm recording this at it's about half 12 on Monday the... What's the date today? Monday the 6th of March, 2023. I don't know when this episode's going to go out. Probably, well, it, you know, it might go out within the week of recording, I suppose. And then next month, it'll be three years since the first episode of the Daily Weekly Podcast. So I'm trying to rope in a few special guests and get Jake back in for a one-off because that's what we we kind of do. Okay, yeah, so the last few episodes I did one, two, I did four episodes by myself. Yeah, the shortest was 15 minutes, longest was 23. Mm, like, at least, I think a 20 minute minimum, 20 to half, 20 minutes to half an hour, I would be satisfied with but just doing it by myself. So I did 15 actors who almost played famous roles, 11 acting couples who fell in love on set, TV shows that continued after the main star left and celebrities who quit Hollywood for normal jobs. And I did kind of write, you know, when I wrote the, because I'm, I don't want to take too much credit, but I was pretty much the writer for the podcast. And it's not like, a, you know, we didn't write scripts or anything. We had brief notes and then, 
you know, whoever I was doing it with on the day, they also had their own notes, but I kind of wrote the outline for it. And I do have outlines for more episodes of these similar topics because, you know, they're just a bit of fact finding on the internet and writing it in your own words and that sort of thing because that's, that's kind of what I do for these topics. So if you want to see more of those, let me know because I have got some of them saved and yeah, maybe I'll do them anyway. Well, I'm just, notice I'm leaning on the table slightly. So if you're watching the video version of this podcast, I'm slightly wobbling there. Apologies. But hey, oh yeah, well, I might as well plug that whilst we're on that topic. This podcast is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, a whole bunch of other podcast platforms and on YouTube. So if you fancy seeing me, I'm waving on the screen right now as I'm adjusting my glasses. If you're in, if you're into that, although yeah, I'm using my iPad camera and I don't know, maybe the angle's a little bit unflattering with the double chin here. I might have to adjust that. Yeah, we'll just suck that in and then there we go. I look a bit better. That was a bit random. Don't know why I was doing that. I'm kind of just rambling on at this point, but let's get into the. The main bulk of today's episode. So for this one, I kind of just want to, you know, it's just a casual chat to have a little catch up. You know, what's new with me? What's new with you? Let me know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. And I know some people think, well, why are you doing a video podcast? Isn't a podcast something you listen to? I mean, yes. But even on Spotify now, you can watch video podcasts. It is the future of podcasting. And then it's so useful because Think of the content you get out of it. If you make a video podcast, then obviously you've got the audio files, which you can put all on the podcast platforms and things. But then you've got the video. And not only can you, you know, put that on YouTube as the full episode, you can break that down into clips and then shorts and reels and things, which I, well, we used to do like a little YouTube short for at least one for each episode of the podcast. Well, they were audio clips just with like a static background, but Especially by doing the video podcast, you know, we can actually have things that you can see, make it a bit more visually interesting to watch. Although I know not everyone sees the point in that, but that's another reason why I kind of put off doing this podcast for so long is that I wanted it to be video format. I I don't want to do an audio only podcast, but you know, if sometimes that's the only way, then so be it. It's not the end of the world. That's what we started off with. But then when I made the switch to make the podcast video format, I just thought it was better. I like watching video podcasts. Maybe that's just me, but there's definitely a market for it and there's an audience. And hey, you know, if our 53 subscribers are into that, then you get to see this lovely face. I don't know how often these podcasts are going to be. You know, in the ideal world, I'd like to for it to be at least one a week. You know, so every Saturday like it used to be. And then throughout the week, there'll be a couple of clips and a couple of YouTube shorts to go along with it, you know, break down some funny moments or some key scenes or some major news that we talked about in the episode that is the end goal for this podcast and I get you know I'm running four YouTube channels pretty much by myself and you know I do work another a real job during the week and on the weekend so I don't have too much time but I've got the week off currently so I'm hoping to really kind of you know not go overboard and think oh right you know because there's a difference between having free time and time for this I think any content creator will know oh yeah just because you've got free hour doesn't mean you should put all your time into this creative effort. You know, you need some me time as well. But I've got to edit some episodes of Daily Weekly Show. Daily Weekly Builds is pretty much set up for the next few weeks because I think a couple of weeks ago I was kind of cranking out the content. So that's set up. Daily Weekly Extra is kind of as and when. There's not so much pressure with that channel. It's like if we've got something for it, great. Then it can go out. Sometimes you know, we could have three bits in a week or nothing for a month. That's just kind of the way it is. And I'm not really bothered about that. Especially where it's just me, you know, I don't mind not having the content for it all the time because it's just there. Like the flagships are the show and builds. And especially with Jake, you know, me and Jake started this whole thing off with the podcast. You know, he dabbles here and there with builds mostly. I mean, even it's still mostly me at the moment, but, you know, it's a where Yeah, it's I don't want to take ownership over everything, but I will proudly take credit for the work that's gone into keeping the Daily Weekly alive, especially for this long, because there have been moments where it could have definitely ended. You know, when Jake left the first time, and I was like, oh, okay, right, I had to, you know, I got Rachel involved, and that was great, and that kept the boat going for a little bit longer, and then Tash joined, and oh, good, and Ridley, and the summer of 2021, I think, God, oh, yeah, 2021, that was, that's peak Daily Weekly, especially for the show, and the podcast as well, because that was still going with me and Rachel mostly. You know, they all departed, well, Rachel and Tash departed at the end of 2021, beginning of 22, 
and then Ridley moved away as well, so he couldn't do it as much. I mean, we still talk Ridley. In fact, we were going to film a couple of episodes of the show last week, but I had to reschedule that for things on my end. So hopefully when Ridley's next back in town, I can get him for a episode or two of the show, follow up of the creator interview and maybe a podcast episode or two because he does movie reviews so film is ridley on instagram do check him out they are spoiler free and he didn't sponsor this video or podcast he didn't tell me to throw that in there but he's my friend he's doing some amazing work and i thought i'd just give him a little shout out so here's to you ridley keep up the good film reviews i do find them interesting and hey you know they're worth a little read and of course check him out on his website as well all right, then, let's get down to some nitty-gritty movie news. All right, so movies that are coming out in the month of March, because, I mean, hopefully I would get this podcast that quick, because otherwise all this news is going to be irrelevant. <laughs> right, so opera, uh, the first one on this list is Operation Fortune, a Guy Ritchie film starring Jason Statham. I remember, I think they filmed this, like, years ago, and this has been delayed because of COVID and things, but I'm a fan of Guy Ritchie and Jason Statham, especially when they team up. They do some good movies together. So this one does seem pretty good. So an MI6 agent, played by Statham, is recruited by a global intelligence agency to track down and stop the sale of deadly new weapons technology that threatens to disrupt the world order. Very dramatic, I'm sure. And then we've got Creed 3, starring Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors. I haven't seen Creed 2. I saw the first Creed movie, I thought that was really good. I think I've only seen parts of the Rocky franchise as well. But apparently it's got some good reviews so far. 5 out of 5 on this website. And then, of course, just a couple of weeks ago, we had Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania come out, which I haven't seen yet. Jake and I were going to see it, but, you know, life gets in the way and we haven't seen it yet. And now I probably won't end up seeing that in cinemas, but I had some mixed things about it. So I guess I'll watch it on Disney Plus when it drops on there in a couple of months, because that's what I did with, well, I used to go to the cinema all the time, like at least once a month. And then it was just, you know, Marvel movies and then COVID and all that stuff. So I haven't really been um, the last time I went to the cinema was to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And before that, it was Spider-Man No Way Home. So it's just Marvel movies. But I didn't see Eternals, Thor Love and Thunder, or Black Panther Wakanda Forever in cinemas. I watched Thor and Black Panther recently on Disney Plus the other week. And yeah, Thor Love and Thunder was just not good. It, I felt like it didn't really get anywhere. And too much of a good thing, I would say. For Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I like long films, but that film was long. I think over 2 hours and 40 minutes, and it dragged at times. It was an okay film, but okay, I think that one was just a bit too long. Whereas I think Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was too short. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, I guess. Is, is that how you use that term right? I don't Actually, I don't think so. And then Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Everyone's calling it like a stepping stone to the next Avengers film, which I guess it kind of is. But then... You also want a film to be self-contained enough, especially for the casual audiences, where you can just see it and enjoy it for what it is. And then when the next thing comes along, oh, great, you know, this as well. Oh, wow, that leads on to this. And oh, well, that's because of that. That's great. But you don't want it to be like an episode of a TV show. Where you have to watch the next one that's not coming out for another few years. What else is coming out in March? Oh, Scream 6. They put this one out really quickly. I think the fifth one did really well, better than people were expecting. And this one seems to be doing really well as well. Although Neve Campbell isn't in it because of a pay dispute. I think they should have paid her what she deserves. She is a staple to that franchise. So if they do a Scream 7, which I think they probably will at this point. Hopefully they get her back for that. Uh, Luther, The Fallen Sun, a co-production between BBC and Netflix. An epic continuation of the award-winning television saga reimagined for film. A gruesome serial killer is terrorising London while brilliant but disgraced detective John Luther, played by Idris Elba, of course, sits behind bars. Haunted by his failure to capture the cyber psychopath who now taunts him, Luther decides to break out of prison to finish the job by any means necessary. Also starring Andy Serkis as well. Ooh, I've seen a couple episodes of Luther, but this film sounds pretty good, although... Judging from that brief description, I'd probably have to see the series before watching the film. And then another superhero film, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, with Heron, he Heron? Helen Mirren. I, I don't, I think I've seen, yeah, I have seen the first Shazam movie, didn't really care for it. Don't really care for the second one, and especially after the whole James Gunn DC announcement where he's just going to reboot everything anyway. But hey, the Flash film coming out later this year, Michael Keatlin, back as Batman, great. Ben Affleck, back as Batman, even better. We need, he deserves more. Yeah, I mean, never say never, I, I guess. Yeah, he, could, he can play an older Bruce Wayne. I think he's brilliant in the role. Hopefully, I just want to see more of him. Oh, coming out towards the end of March, John Wick Chapter 4. Looking forward to this one. They're just so good. Keanu Reeves is excellent as John Wick. This role is, is great. 
See, I think I've seen all three of them so far, although I might need to rewatch them just to refresh my memory before I do see this one again. I don't know. It doesn't... I don't know if it's one I'd see in the cinema. Maybe. Like, I've never been to the cinema by myself. I know people do that and, you know, no judgment, but I just haven't took that step yet. And I feel like sometimes I'm missing, like, Avatar, Where the Water. I didn't have anyone to see that with. And, you know, it's been out for a little while now and I, I haven't seen it yet. And knowing Disney in that film, it's going to be a while before they take it out of cinemas to put it on Disney Plus because of you know, the money, obviously. It's, I think it's like the third highest box office film at the moment or it's going to be up there. And it's a long film, so maybe I should go by myself to see it. Same with Ant-Man, with John Wick as well. I don't know. I mean, it's not like you talk to people while you're there. You just sit in silence next to someone in a black room for two hours watching something. And then you... Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I should do that. I should take myself to the cinema just to see a film. I don't know why I don't do that. Oh, another one coming out towards the end of the month. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. This seemed like a good film. It'd be interesting... I mean, I assume if it's successful, they'll probably do a whole cinematic universe off of it. But So we got uh, Hugh Grant and... Oh, Hugh Grant's in it. I know Chris Pine is like one of the main characters, I think. I've never played Dungeons & Dragons. I almost did with some friends many years ago. And I just... I don't know. I got as far as designing a character, I think. I don't even know if I finished that. Yeah. It's just never not really been my thing. But the movie seems interesting. Tetris. I saw the trailer for this on YouTube the other day. It's the story about the whole, what how Tetris came about, and it seems really interesting. I think this is an Apple, uh, Apple TV film. So I don't currently have Apple TV, but I need to catch up on Ted Lasso. So I need to get that. There's some good stuff on there, but there are just too many streaming services. Ah, I'm currently subscribed to Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Now TV, or just Now as they call it which is a lot of money each month. Remember when there were only a few streaming services, but now like every single TV channel company has its own service, so everything's split up. It's not like the days where, you know, shows that would now be on Peacock and Paramount Plus and Prime or whatever it used to be all on Netflix when that was the big one. And now they're all everywhere. So yeah, you've got HBO Max, Paramount Plus, Peacock, uh, Apple TV. There are loads of streaming services and I can't keep up. Although I have to say, the one I think is best value for me is Amazon Prime because I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon and it's all included. So I think that one's the best value for money. I think Disney Plus is the best one for content because there's so much on there that I enjoy, especially since they've got all the Fox stuff on there as well. I mean, that's perfect. Netflix is the most expensive one that I pay for and it's the one I use the least. Um, there are some good shows on there, but I just wish it was cheaper. Although I pay it for the, the house and other people use it. But usually I get offers for Apple TV, like a free trial or a free whatever it is. So maybe I'll just I'll get it. Because I do want to get it. There's some good stuff on there. But it's just, oh, yeah, it's just a lot of money these days, isn't it? All these streaming services. Speaking of streaming services, a film coming to Netflix is Murder Mystery 2, starring Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler. I feel like Adam Sandler, although he's done less work in recent years... The quality hasn't improved. Like, if you watch an Adam Sandler film from 20 years ago to one now, you kind of, you get the same thing. Like, you go in there, it is what it is. It's just something to enjoy, not to think about too much. But I enjoyed the first Murder Mystery a few years ago. So that was good. So I might watch this one. Oh, and then, well, at the beginning of April, we've got the Super Mario Bros. movie. Still unsure about Chris Pratt voicing the role. I, Chris Pratt is in everything these days. Kind of bored of it. You know, the movie, I love the animation style that they've done. It's pretty perfect. I will probably see this. I don't think this one is a solo cinema trip for me. I'm not that much. I'm not that desperate to see it. But, you know, when it eventually comes to streaming, I'm sure I will watch it as well. Well, that's pretty much all for the movies coming out I'm going to talk about. But, hey, we can't forget TV. And one show that I'm absolutely loving right now, and I'm sure you are too, is The Last of Us. And hopefully, if all goes to plan... There we go. I'm, I'm saying it public now that in a couple of weeks' time, I will be reuniting with a former member of the Daily Weekly team to talk about The Last of Us in a podcast episode. So that is exciting. Hopefully we can actually, you know, arrange schedules to get around to do it. So that would be pretty fun because I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, I played the game when it first came out 10 years ago on the PS3. I don't know if I completed it. I kind of played it with my dad or like he played it and I watched him. And then when it was remastered on PS4, we I think we played through it again. Now that I've seen the show, I do want to play it again. So I did re-download it on my PlayStation 4. But I've been kind of holding off. I know there are differences between the show and the series. But 
the show and the series, between the show and the game. But I kind of want to wait for the series to be over and then play the game again because I, yeah, I just think that might be a bit more enjoyable. And the graphics are good on the PS4 remaster. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I still have the PS3 and the PS3 version, but the complete kind of Last of Us Part 1 remake on PlayStation 5, that looks amazing. I don't have a PlayStation 5, but if I did, I'd have to get that. And I've never played The Last of Us Part 2, although from what I've heard of that game, I don't really want to play that. And, you know, Last of Us is getting a Season 2, but I just really hope that it isn't an adaptation of the second game. Give us more. Hopefully they've realised, you know, the success of the show and, you know, the cast and everything that casual audiences and even fans of the source media are going to want more of this. At least I think so. I know you, the writers might not like too much of a good thing. You don't want it to run on forever and ever like The Walking Dead or whatever. I understand that. It doesn't have to be the next Walking Dead. But just give us something more, you know, something original between set between the games or before you know the first one's like what 20 something years into the into the apocalypse give us a slightly younger joel show us him and tommy and tess and make some creative liberties you know they've already done that i think if they do more of that it will pay off there's no point doing a literally direct like frame to frame remake from game to show because you know what's the point in that i hope they do some more i don't want it to end i mean season two is confirmed i'm pretty sure but it's going to be a long way before we see that. I think the first season began filming, I want to say 2021, and it finished in 2022. So let's say if they've just started the writing of season two now, it might start filming by the end of this year to finish in 2024. So, God, it might be like 2025 before we see this series. It'd be another Westworld, which, oh, I'm gutted they cancelled that for season five. They don't... Ah, let's yeah. Let's move on to Westworld. I haven't seen season four. It did kind of fall off. Season one and two. Season well, season one was you know great. Obviously, season two was like a nice kind of part two epilogue sort of thing to the first season. And season three was very different. You know, so I understand that's why people started to fall off and it was getting too complicated and trying to be too clever and things. I mean, I I finished kind of I binged the like the second half of that series a couple of months ago and i enjoyed it i was like oh yeah season four which i haven't got around to watching yet but then i had the news that it was cancelled and that's kind of ruined it for me i mean they i heard that they're still going to pay the cast for season five even though they're not making it because of some contract agreements or something it's like you're paying out the money come on just finish it off part of the original plan it was going to go back to where it all began and season five that's what the arc was i'm still holding hope that we will get a Westworld Season 5. Even if you cut down the episodes even further. Or make it like a two-part TV movie or something. Maybe that's a bit too tight. But just give us more Westworld. That's what I want. Please. But yeah, that was another expensive TV show that took years to make. So, oh, I understand what, you know. I guess it saves them money. But I just, I just missed that show. That would be good to bring it back. And I know I've just talked about one apocalypse show with The Last of Us, but I can't make an episode of this podcast without mentioning The Walking Dead, right? We mentioned that in our first episode right at the back at the beginning. And, well, you know, the show may have ended. The last season was a little rushed. I didn't quite like it. The last episode was good, but I did the whole season as a whole. There should have been more Commonwealth stuff and got rid of all the Reapers, but that's just me. I saw on Twitter recently that the production on the Rick and Michonne show is underway they've started filming that and that's great to see i think that's coming out either the very end of this year or beginning of next year and then we've got the nag naggy oh, there we go. <laughs> the naggy spin-off the negan and maggie show dead city which i really hate that name i remember when they first announced it, it was called isle of the dead which i prefer was a better title i guess it's too similar to like the george ramiro zombie films and maybe that's what the inspiration was for a working title but the walking dead dead city i don't know just the fact that the the word dead is used two times right next to each other. It just really bothers me. Ugh, but that's coming out. That seems interesting. Fear the Walking Dead, final season. When they announced that, suddenly on Instagram, I, I made a comment which got a few hundred likes, actually, not to brag. But people were like, what? This came out of nowhere. I, Because they announced that Kim Dickens is coming back as a Madison. And I thought that was going to be like a renewed thing for the show. Oh, it's giving it a new lease of life. I didn't expect it to be ending after season 8, but now it kind of makes sense. Hopefully they get the actress who plays Alicia to come back, at least for the final episode. I forgot her name. That's really... It's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, 
But hopefully they get her back for the final episode, have her reunite with her mum. That's just kind of what they need. But yeah, that's going to be a shame. I don't want that show to end. It's sure it's been a bit patchy in places, but I felt like with Madison back, it could have given it a new lease of life. I just hope the show ends with Morgan and whoever else makes it out alive heading back to Alexandria. He doesn't have to make it to the Commonwealth, but at least to Alexandria, because I know he's tried a couple times in fear to take the guys back to Alexandria. I honestly don't know why he hasn't done that sooner. Instead of starting up communities of his own, why not just take everyone back to Alexandria? That that just makes sense. Like, if I was doing that, like, I know why he left and everything, but after the time out there and the things that have happened and all that, you know, after a nuclear, nuclear explosion went off, just get out of there and head back to Alexandria. Why? Why wouldn't you? I mean, as far as he's aware, well, the hilltop's still there. Kingdom is still there. You know, he doesn't know what's happened. He knows that the War of the Saviors is over, but take everyone and go back there, Morgan. That would be great. If you make it to the Commonwealth, even better, but just at least go back to Alexandria, please. People want him to reunite with Rick and Michonne. I, I think that's nice because, you know, Morgan was the first person that Rick met and everything, but I don't know if that's going to fit with the show that they're doing. So that would be interesting to see. And then, of course, filming for the Daryl Dixon show is also f underway as well. I hope they don't call it The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon, but they probably will at this point, just because it, that's a easy, marketable TV show name. Everyone's going to know what it's about. Bit of a weird one, how he ends up in France. I don't really understand why, but I guess we'll find out. That's part of the show. I think that's coming out probably end of this year. So I think yeah, we got Walking, we got Fear the Walking Dead in May, and then... Uh, the Walking Dead, Dead City in June, I believe, late June. And then the end of the year is probably going to be the Daryl show because that one's more closer to being done. And then the beginning of next year will be the Rick and Michonne show as well. And then is that it? Is that going to be it for the Walking Dead universe? They're wrapping everything up. Hmm. And no word on a season two for Tales of the Walking Dead. When first announced, sounded like a brilliant idea, but I don't think the execution paid off. I, I like the idea of new original stories, but I feel like that's just a good opportunity to revisit older characters or missing points in the show, especially where they've had so many time jumps. That's what we need to see. So if they do do a season two of that, I'd rather see more older characters instead of new, newer characters, if that makes sense. And uh, I've caught myself, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, I've caught myself a few times looking at the, the screen as it's the camera's recording me. And I realize I look really miserable. I'm just kind of sat here talking. I don't... I have one of those resting faces. So if, I, if I'm if i having to smile, I'm, that's me making a constant effort to look happy, like I'm enjoying myself, which I am. And I'm surprised I made it this far, but there we go. Not bad. I talked about a few things, a few movies and TV shows, and hey, none of this was scripted. Like I said, I didn't even have any notes. Nothing at all. So I was just going off the top of my head. But as promised at the beginning of this episode, I will round it off with a story. Well, some weird news. It's been gone for quite some time, but it's back. It's time for the Not Yet Titled News. Okay, so I can't actually find a good current weird news story, because I've just had a quick look. But back in the day when we were doing this podcast, I did make a little list of weird news stories that I came across. So let's take a trip down memory lane, look at one from the archives. All right, let's see if this clickbaity title is any good. Man beaten up by octopus. A man has been whipped by what he described as the angriest occupus. Occupus? <laughs> a man has been whipped by what he described as the angriest octopus while swimming on holiday at Western Australian Beach. In a video that has gone viral, the octopus can be seen in shallow waters lashing out at geologist Lance Carlson. The creature came after him again later and struck him on the arm before whipping his neck and upper back. The tentacles left stinging red welts on his skin, which Mr. Carlson said only eased after he poured cola over them. I guess if you get whacked by an octopus, pour some Coca-Cola on you. Not a sponsor, but hey, there's a new use for the product. The former lifeguard told Australian News that he preferred his treatment for sea animal stings is vinegar, but he did not have any on him at the time. Well, if you go to the beach, and you know, especially in Australia, or anywhere exotic like that, where you might get attacked by the local inhabitants, make sure you take some cola and some vinegar with you. Well, that's pretty much it. Well, boring news article. I remember when these used to be funny. Now it's just clickbait. Well, that was a rather disappointing way to end the episode, but I guess they can't all be winners, can they? 
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of the Daily Booty Podcast, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know your feedback. Yeah, it's been nice. I was a bit apprehensive. I almost did this last night, actually. It was like nine o'clock at night, and I just got a wave of motivation to do it. But here we go. It's the first episode. Maybe it's the start of season five. I will probably put this in a season five playlist on the Daily Weekly Podcast YouTube channel. So, hey, he is hoping, but I can, off the top of my head right now, I'm sure there will be at least three more episodes of this podcast this year. So that will be exciting. Stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share it with all your friends if they enjoy you know, things like this. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now. So you've just heard me talk about The Last of Us TV show in this episode of the podcast, but what if the characters from The Last of Us made into Lego minifigures? Well, I did just that over on Daily Weekly Builds.